Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Proton and today we're going to be going over how to build your very own gaming PC. So in this video, I'll basically be showing you how to put the components together, as well as what you won't be seeing though is the reasoning and directly the components in this rig. For that, check out my Procham rig video I made earlier, links in the description, and also if you need help choosing the parts or have a specific budget in mind, check out some of my other builds and hopefully that should give you an idea. So assembling the PC can seem a bit daunting, but you have to remember that it's only as difficult as you make it. And if you have no idea what you're doing, this video should help you out a lot though. And nowadays computer manufacturers have got really good at making things straightforward to assemble, especially when it comes to PC parts. And even the manuals that you get with your MOBO, CPU, etc. have a step by step guide. That said, this video will be a walkthrough and sort of like a build log on how I built mine. Now in the end it did take me around 3 hours building it, yet I did have a camera in front of me, so for the most part it will probably take you around 2 hours ish. Now this video is the way I done it, but there are plenty of other ways. This one I just found the easiest for me, so without further ado, let's get into it. Just remember if I'm going a bit fast, I'll try and do my best to explain it as clearly as I can, but just pause the video at certain points when you need to connect things. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're properly grounded before you handle any computer parts. Electrostatic discharge, or static for short, can fry your components. And a good way to ground yourself so that this doesn't happen is either wear a wrist strap specifically for that, which you can pick up on eBay or Amazon for about a quid, and yeah, that can help. The other way is to just touch something metal straight before you start the build, so like a PC case, or just anything you've got lying around that's actually metal. So for step 1 you need to prepare your case by removing the side panels and getting all of the case connectors such as your front panel I.O., USB and all that jazz to the back of the case, or a place where you can easily manage it. If your case doesn't have standoffs installed, then use your motherboard, hold it up to the case and see where it needs to go. Most modern cases either have them already installed, or in the case diagrams, which should say MITX, ATX and the rest. This equates to the size of the board, and for most of you it should be ATX, which is a standard size, but it will normally send the MOBO box. Ok, so let's say you finish this step by moving the side panels and getting the case ready with all the standoffs installed. Now what? Well you have to prepare the other components outside of your PC. So for step 2, get your MOBO out of the box and place it onto the standard box and not the bag that it's enclosed in. People say that the anti-static bags aren't dangerous but I just wouldn't risk it as the electric difference inside the bag and outside the bag is very different. So just place it onto the cardboard box, story over. From there you need to install the CPU. Now there are different but similar ways for AMD but with Intel all you have to do is unlock the CPU socket arm and align the triangle on the CPU corner with the corresponding corner on your motherboard socket. Now you should see an image on screen now. Now let that fall into place and it should be gentle and if you hear a pushing or snapping noise you're doing it wrong. From there, lower the socket arm or arms depending on what socket you have, and that should lock in the CPU. I will say that hearing a sort of horrible cringy noise whilst pressing it is completely normal, so don't be scared to use a little more strength. If you do it properly, it should be in and you're good to go to the next step, which is installing the RAM. Now for this step, start looking onto what RAM slots you need to use up first. For example, on my MSI MOBA it has 8 DIMM slots, so I just need to use 1, 3, 6 and 8 first. So that's just what I've done. Let's look at your motherboard manual first. So then push back the clips on the RAM slots and place some memory into the slots. Then push down the RAM sticks evenly. The memory clips should lock when you push the RAM in completely and make a clicky noise to tell you that they're in. And now at step 4 you want to install the cooler. Now if you've got a water cooler like me, don't do that yet but for most people with air coolers, start now. Just for reference though, I'm going to show you how I installed mine, but if you were doing this, you would fix the radiator onto the case first. But you'll see that here. So the best thing to do is refer to your manual for specifics, researching up videos on the specific cooler should help too. To go over it briefly though, just remove the heatsink from the box slash covering and install the right bracket onto the back of the motherboard. The type of the bracket will change depending on what socket you have and the front of the CPU box or motherboard should say what socket it is. So just match those up and align it and you're good to go. And if you followed those instructions, now that you've put in the bracket, you want to put in the thermal compound, on your CPU that is. Some CPU coolers already come with pre-applied thermal paste on the cooler, but if yours doesn't, you just want to add a pea-sized dot on the center, no more, literally, you don't want to add any more. More is less, and then fix the CPU cooler onto the top. I will say that if you're doing this, make sure you fix it on opposite ends, like a crisscross method. Start with one corner, and then do the opposite corner, and so on. So that if you fix the cooler on properly, it shouldn't f*** the thermal paste or crush your CPU. Be gentle, take your time, and you should be fine. Don't completely tighten one screw at a time though, you should do each corner bit by bit until it's properly seared. Then connect the fans to the heatsink and then you should have the CPU fan slot connected to the motherboard. Again, look at your manual where this is and it should say on the board. Now for step 5 we're going to install the PSU or power supply. 
In my build, I had a modular one, so I got to choose what cables I installed. But I have to say that when I started, this confused me so much, but it's actually really straightforward. If you haven't got a modular one, then you don't need to worry, but here's what you should install. Make sure that you clip the 24 pin, which is the largest one, as well as the EPS or ATX CPU one. Your power supply manual should show this, but it's basically the 8 pin cable. Then count out what your graphics card needs and connect those PCI connectors as well. For example, my 980 Ti had two 8 pin PCIe connectors. So I just grabbed two included and used that. You may have a 6 pin, an 8 pin or more, doesn't really matter, but you don't really need to install more PCIe cables than you have graphics cards. Then count out how many SATA devices you have, this is basically your hard drives, SSD, etc. Mine had 5 so I only need to install 5 cables and match that up to the 5 connectors, as I didn't need any more. And the final one should be your 4-pin Molex. This is basically for things such as onboard sound, fan controllers, etc. I personally like to have quite a few of these on them readily available, so one cable should be fine though. Once you've got all the cables plugged into the power supply, simply route them through the back of the closest hole. This was the largest one next to the PSU with the grommets on them. You then need to prep your case in terms of fans. Install all the fans you need or have available and you should be good. What you do want to make sure you do is that you have all the fans oriented so there's more air going into the case than it's being pushed outside of it. This is called positive air pressure. If you're confused about what way the fans push air, there's normally an arrow which shows the way the air flows, but if that doesn't help you, the side with the sticker or plastic support is normally where the air travels towards. If you have a water cooler, don't install that yet unless you see that you can't get it in and the motherboard's already installed. Anyway, for step 7 you need to put in the IO shield on the back of the case. This is pretty simple stuff. The shield should be the right way around and so on. You should find that the PS2 and USB ports are at the top and Ethernet is on the bottom right with the audio along the bottom. Do be careful though because a lot of them are really sharp and could cut your hand if you're not careful. You should hear a clicker noise though and if it's properly inserted, that's the end of that. And now we're going to move on to step 8. Now for step 8, I personally like to put the board in now. In this video, I've got my case standing up so that you guys can easily see. I would lay the case down flat and line it up to the motherboard with the rear I.O. panel so that components are shown through the back side. Line up the motherboard to the standoffs and you should see that one in the centre holds the board for you. Now place the motherboard screw on each opposite ends of the motherboard and secure them in place with screws. Now install the rest of the screws for your motherboard and tighten them down until your board is properly secured. Don't tighten them down too much though as this can cause your board to crack. Now at this point you do have the option to install your water cooler if you haven't done so already and this makes it easier for the next step because you didn't have the pump dangling whilst installing the board. Anyway, for step 9 you want to install all of your drives and in this case, my case, no pun intended, had an SSD slot at the back where I fixed it to. For most people installing hard drives you have base for that, you want to take it out and in my case set it up like that. You also want to make sure that the security fixed too. If you don't have this tooler system, then install your drives into the cages facing the way up so you can easily plug in the SATA and SATA power cables. Then install the cage back into the case and you should be good to go. If you have a DVD drive, we're just going to install that now as well. So push out the 5 and a quarter inch panel and then slot the drive the right way up. Push it as far as possible and ta-da, it's done. My case and a lot of the higher end ones will have a tooler system, but you can just install two or more screws on each side where they line up if your case doesn't support that at least. Now in my case, I also repeated this for the hot swap bay, and if you have a fan controller, it would work the same way as well. Now for step 11, this is just plugging in your SATA cables from one end of your hard drive to the SATA ports on your motherboard. If you need to check which SATA ports you should use first, it doesn't really matter that much, but it's still nice to be orderly, and one tip is that if you can use sticky layer with something like that just to name the drives, or at least the SATA cables, for example, you could attach to the hidden part of the SATA cable in the case and write on it, primary drive, something like that. You get my drift. And for step 12, we're just going to install our graphics cards or cards. So start by moving the expansion slot from the case at the back. I aligned where the card would go and removed it from one level and the one below it. Now try and install your graphics card in the closest PCIe slot to the CPU since that's the one which normally runs on X16. Now make sure the clip on the slot is pulled back and you put in the video card. Make sure you apply equal pressure until it's fully seated and don't worry if you need to apply a little more pressure than you normally do, this is completely fine. And now that the graphics card's in properly, use the same screws you removed from the slot bracket and put those back in. This should secure it properly. If you have another card, repeat your step for the second card and bridge them together with an SLI connector for Nvidia, but I don't think AMD has to do that anymore though. Now step 13 is the penultimate one and you need to connect all the cables, so route the cables behind the case and plug them all in. So the main ones being the CPU cable, which is the one in the top left corner normally, and the 24 pin ATX connector, which is on the right side. If you are putting them through grommets like me, try and make sure they come out the closest one so that it doesn't have to travel much distance. This makes it look a lot cleaner. Now for SATA devices such as your hard drive SSD, you just need to connect the SATA power. 
Do the same for the DVD drive and you should have both a SATA cable and SATA power for each of the connected drives. Just take into consideration cable management when you're doing all this and how you're going to manage that. And then you've got the case fans, and now in my case, which is a Fantex one, but this might also apply to you for the NZXT, plug them into the hub and connect them to your CPU header on the motherboard. And the other plug, which should be on the left side, I think mine was, plug that into the four pin Molex. Now if you don't have a fan hub or controller, try and get the fans to go into the system fan headers, and again, every motherboard is different, so refer to your manual for where these are. You've also got another power for the graphics card, so plug in the right amount of PCI cables into it, for example, mine had 2x8 pin, so I plugged in 2x6 plus 2 pin connectors. Trust me, it's a lot less confusing than it sounds. And that was the end. Lastly, make sure a CPU fan or pump that's on the cooler is already connected to the CPU fan header on the motherboard, but I think we already done that in some earlier steps. After everything's been connected, we're good to go into the next step. So step 14, which is the last step for building, is connecting the front I.O. So in my case, I just plugged in the USB 3.0 and always refer to the manual where the power, reset, USB 2.0 and onboard audio was. This is probably the most boring step, but should only take you around 5 minutes. And now you've got your system built. Before you turn it on, you want to make sure that everything's properly connected and hopefully you've cable managed your system too. When you start, you need to install an operating system and drivers. So unfortunately, I can't really show you because I didn't film that, but I'll link below a video which can show you that. And so guys, welcome to my new rig, the Spectre. This has been one long ass video, no, it's probably dragged on quite a bit, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Sorry if I was going a bit fast. Ladies. But again, there's just so much to cover, and hopefully you did pause it at a certain point if you didn't understand it. I will link below some other build guides though if you actually were pretty stuck. Now thanks for watching, and if you did like this video, do give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, well you know what to do. I'd actually quite like to hear what you guys thought when you first finished building your system. And also giving tips to other first time builders. Anyway, cheers guys, this has been Proto, adios.